This is Big Fat Simulations with a demo of our very first radar game, which we named The Simulator when we created it four years ago. This was the first publicly available radar simulation that we ever created, and it was not designed to be a game so much as it was intended to be a simulation. A taste of the real thing. This does not have anything like scores, crashes, music, or anything like that. It's a single level, and it's got a price tag of six dollars, so who can complain, right? I'm going to uh, be busy in a moment here, so I may not be doing a lot of talking, in risk of making this the most boring video you've ever watched. Let me uh, do my best to both speak and control. I'm going to bring up some overlays here, which show things like fixed names, SIDs, which are departure paths, and STARS, which are arrival paths. Uh, that's a lot to look at. Let's just leave the fixed names there and I'll talk you through everything else. This is our main airport right here, and at the moment we've got two aircraft simultaneously taking off. It's our job to get them up to the altitude they need to be at and onto the flight paths that they're supposed to be on. Looking at this, this is a tiny King Air, and we need to send them by way of Toner, which is down here. And this is a much larger aircraft, Zip 245, and they are going also to that toner waypoint. Um, being a jet, they're going to be traveling much higher. So we need to get both of these aircraft to that waypoint in an unconflicted manner. And I'm going to do that by giving this aircraft direct right away. This one here, I'm going to r climb them on runway heading for a moment before I allow them to uh, climb out over top of this aircraft here. Now this one's blinking an H. Um, I'm supposed to accept this handoff from the adjacent controller. As you can see, the aircraft's not even on my frequency yet. The aircraft does not get switched to me until I accept their handoff. Okay, this aircraft here needs to go to the next sector. Uh, what I'm supposed to do here is assign them 4,000 feet and put them into the handoff. A lot of this may be going over your head, don't worry about it. We've got some good instructions that explain everything very clearly. I'll give this aircraft 16,000 and direct toner. And I'll give this aircraft a little bit higher. I'll give this aircraft about 7,000 feet for now. This aircraft here can have a little bit lower, maybe 8,000. Here comes Slamjet 752 going to Edgar, which is over here. And what I like to do for these jets that are climbing straight out towards Edgar I want to make sure they stay clear of any potential arrivals. So what I want them to do is climb out a ways before turning towards Edgad. And I do that by saying maintain 16,000, which is the highest altitude I can legally give. And I tell them to go direct to Edgad, leaving 8,000 feet. And it's a mouthful. I see that the adjacent controller has accepted my handoff down here at the bottom. And I've got a new handoff to accept. Excuse me, let me get rid of these stars. Okay, I'll accept that handoff and I'll wait for the aircraft to come onto frequency. These two aircraft, they're not going to be a conflict at all. This one's been assigned 16,000. I'm going to give this aircraft 15,000. Slam Jet, I'm going to give him 8,000. My usual pattern with this game is to bring arrivals down to 8,000 almost right away and departures go to 7,000 right away. That's just until I know there's no further conflict between the arrival and the departure, and then I break those altitudes. Uh, this is a conveyor, and it's taking its sweet time getting down. They're still up at 9,000 feet. I'm not going to be able to turn them onto a base leg anytime soon. That's complicated for me, uh, because they're going to have a fairly lengthy downwind track. It's going to take them over some higher terrain. There's terrain here that goes up to 5,000 feet. So, the lowest altitude I'm going to give this aircraft at this time is 5,000 feet. I'm going to put this Zip 245 into a handoff. There's an H there, which means the aircraft is still mine until somebody else accepts it. And who's going to accept it? Well, let's bring up the sector info, and it would be uh, Kappa Sector. These are all fictitious sectors, by the way. It's uh, suggested that this would be based in Hawaii, and... Oddly enough, our next game, Radar Chaos Hawaii Edition, will be very similar to what you're seeing here, except it will have some game to it, and it would be based on real-world Hawaii procedures. 
or fairly real. Okay, this H is now blinking, which means that the adjacent controller is saying, I accept that aircraft. All I have to do now is assign it the frequency. And to put this aircraft into a handoff as well, this aircraft, I'm going to get them into a base leg. I'm going to turn them left to a heading of 180, and I'm going to assign them 4,000 feet. And hopefully they hustle down and get to, down to about 3,000 feet for their ILS intercept. Here's another departure. It's a Navajo going to Edgad, doing the same thing as this jet did. Do I have any more pending departures? Yeah, I sure do. I've got a, uh, an Airbus climbing off the same airport going to the same place. So it's slow airplane being chased down by a faster airplane. My solution to this is to uh, give this aircraft an immediate left turn to get them out of the way. I'm going to give them their uh, assign their requested altitude of uh, 11,000 feet when I can. For now it's just 7,000. So if you're following me here, there's a bigger aircraft about to leap off behind this slower one. So I've given this slower one a left turn early. Now in real life, I couldn't just do that because this is uh, the tower controller's airspace below 3,000 feet. I would have to ask that tower controller, pretty please, can I turn this aircraft early? We'll just pretend, for argument's sake, that the tower controller has a sense of humor. Yeah, this aircraft's doing just fine. I'm going to give them 2,000 feet now. I'm going to accept the handoff on this arrival. This arrival, when they come on frequency, I'm going to give them 8,000. And this departure has only got 7,000, so there's some vertical separation there. I'll give this aircraft a left to a heading of 120 and the approach clearance. Slams at 794, they can have 5,000 feet. I give them 5,000 just in case I forget about them and they wind up in this higher terrain. This uh, pending departure, we'll be seeing them any moment now. Just I'm just waiting for it to happen. I'm sure glad I've turned this Navajo to a hard left. This aircraft can be put into the handoff. It's going to be a vertical handoff. They'll exit our zone vertically. Okay, now I'm in trouble here. I've allowed this aircraft to exit my airspace before putting them into a handoff. So the controller to the south is probably rolling their eyes at this moment. what happens when you get busy talking. Okay, here's our pending departure, what we were so worried about. Slams at 534. I'm going to give them uh, 16,000. Direct Ed Gad leaving 8,000. And as soon as I see some separation between these two, I will turn this Navajo on course for Ed Gad as well. This arrival only gets 8,000 because remember our Navajo is climbing to 7. Budget can get switched to tower now. Oops. Lots to do. Okay. I have faith that these two aircraft here will not conflict. I'm going to put this one on a heading. I'm going to send the direct direct I get, actually. I've got a good feeling here. And we'll just watch these two and make sure they don't bump elbows and knees on the way out to Edgad. The slam jet's doing beautifully. We're going to bring them down to 2,000 feet now. now this pilot, these pilots will slow themselves down as they get uh, lower. Okay, this Airbus is doing beautifully. They, these two aircraft are never going to see one another. Another handoff to accept. Next pending arrival is a Dash 8 coming from Pickle, wherever that is. Here it is, Pickle. And if we bring up the star for Pickle, Pickle arrivals come to 11, come to us descending to 11,000 feet. So at the moment I'm thinking, I better keep this airspace clear of everybody. I'm concerned about this aircraft here, this budget 329, conflicting with this pending arrival. I'm not really sure who's going to make it in first, but uh, this aircraft's been assigned uh, 8,000 feet, and uh, I'm thinking it'll be this one first.
You can see this Arava that we handed over to the control tower is doing beautifully. They're descending out of 900 feet now. They're about two miles from touchdown. And the next arrival is this Airbus 320, which we'll be turning onto a baseline very shortly. And see they've slowed themselves down quite a bit. Notice how fast they are when they come to us. They're up at uh, over 300 knots. These two aircraft, I'm just going to double confirm that they're vertically separated, 7,000 and yes, 8,000. They are going to get a look at each other, but there's no conflict, there's no cause for concern. Okay, here's that pending arrival I was talking about. It does look like a bit of a tie between these two. So I'm going to make sure I have some vertical. This one here is on their way down to 8, so when this budget checks in, I'll only give them 9. Uh, this slamjet's ready for a base like turn, right to a heading of 360. I'm going to put this slamjet into the handoff a little bit early. You'll notice I'm able to move the data tags. That's incredibly handy. When you get a cluster of aircraft, and usually it's when a bunch of control action is immediately required and you've got six tags overlapping each other. It's uh, pretty frustrating. I've had people email me and say, can't you make this better? And uh, the truth is I probably could. I could make them auto tag. Okay, this adjacent controller wants this aircraft now, so over he goes to... Who am I switching him to? Sector info. I'm switching him to Kiholo. Frequency for Kiholo. Here we go. I've got to get ready to turn this slamjet onto the ILS in a moment here. Okay, these two are tail to tail, which means I can bring this one down to 4,000. 4,000 because I'm thinking about this terrain. This Navajo is wanting higher, I'm sure, but uh, uh, they're just going to have to wait. I'm going to keep this budget coming down to uh, 5,000. And I'll bring this one down to. Uh, bring this one down to 6,000, let's say. Okay, this one's ready for a turn. Right to 0, 6, 0. Clear for the ILS approach to runway 0, 9. As soon as I make see this aircraft make a reasonable effort at turning for the low class, I'm going to switch them over to the control tower. And there they go in the turn, so over to tower. Contact. Tower now. Okay, these two aircraft are tail to tail, meaning I can give this aircraft its requested altitude of 11,000 feet. And I uh, may as well put them into the handoff. I don't need them anymore. Uh, this one's overtaking this one. There's an overtake happening. And this is actually rather complicated. What I'm going to have to do here is stop this arrival at 9,000. That way, they can all wind up in a tangle over this waypoint here. And as long as I've got some vertical separation, life's good. I'll keep this aircraft coming down to 4,000. This one here is coming down to 5,000. And this one will be coming down to 6,000. I can see right now I'm about to get extremely busy because we've got one, two, three, four, five, six arrivals in the queue. So you can watch me squirm through it, or we could just cut the video, uh, cut the video short. You can download it and try it for yourself. How's that? Thanks for watching. I uh, hope this wasn't too boring for you. I'm sure some of you found it interesting. Have a great day.